Yo, what's going on guys, it's Houston Sports Talk back in the video today, and we're going to be talking about if the Phoenix Suns should be trade, should, should they trade DeAndre Aiden or not. Um, I think this is an interesting thing to talk about as, um, you know, things are starting to really go down for Fe the Phoenix Suns as they, um, with a, with a, um, with a w win for, no, the, what happened today to make them go down to 12? It, we know they were at 12. They've been at 12. Um, but um, now being at 12th in the Western Conference and, you know, a little bit far back from that um, 11, no, yeah, that, that 10 seed and the Lakers, you know, only a half a game back. Um, the Suns are, you know, very close to the 13th seed. And with Devin Booker, you know, not going to be back for about another, uh, I'd say, eight to ten days, which is about five to six games for the Suns. Um, this The Suns are just going to keep getting digging themselves in a hole that they can't get out of. And um, one of their biggest problems this year is DeAndre Hayden. I mean, it, it's something for the, from time to time it's felt like he doesn't want to be there. And um, there are many teams that are interested in him. And one of the teams that is interested in him, that's, which I'm going to talk about a little bit, is the Toronto Raptors. Um, but I just, you know, feeling like, like, to be honest with you guys, I don't think that the Suns, like, even though, even if they did trade DeAndre Aiden, they're not going to stop fighting in the West with Chris Paul, even though he's 37. Devin Booker, once, I think this team should start playing a little bit different once Devin Booker returns and then once Cam Johnson returns and Mikel Bridges, you got Mikel Bridges. Um, I just think that really we haven't seen this Suns team healthy. I mean, Booker's been hurt for a while. Um, I mean, you think about this. Um, Dem before Devin Booker got hurt, Chris Paul was hurt. So Devin Booker uh, was not was not available. Devin Booker was um was not there when 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 Chris Paul when Chris so then Devin got hurt and then Chris Paul came back so Chris Paul came back when Devin got hurt so these guys have not been playing with each other a lot um Cam Johnson's been out the most and he's a big part of their team um I think Cam Payne Cam Cameron Payne's been out for a while and he's a he's another big part of their team I think some other players have been out um I think Aiden's even had some injuries himself. So this has been the Suns team. Even though they're struggling, they're very injured. And I think that this is a team, once Devin Booker returns, it could look way different, but it, they can be, they might be in a hole that they can't dig themselves out of. I mean, right now they're not too far back from that 10 seed. I mean, it'd take one win and maybe one or two teams to lose to get back in. Um, but with their upcoming schedule, that's going to be really hard. Uh, they they face the Brooklyn Nets on Thursday. Um, then their following schedule, you know, concludes to the Pacers, and we know how, the, how they've been this season with Tyrese Halliburton and that squad. Um, then go on to the Grizzlies, then to the Hornets, which um, the Hornets have been bad this year. But if you don't, if you play, if you're struggling and you match up against the Hornets and s some of their guys like Lamella Ball and Terry Rozier have a good game. You could lose. So the Hornets are a dangerous team if you're struggling. Um, and then you're for that final game, you face Luka Doncic in the Mavs, um, who's pretty much owned you. Um, and that would be kind of cool if Devin Booker returned in that game um, against the Mavs. But so you got a five, you got a hard five game stretch here um, without Devin Booker and without Cam Johnson. So I think that. That's just going to get them even worse. It's going to get them down to the 13 seed. Um, I don't think they would fall down to 14. I think the Spurs would stay at would stay at that 14 spot, and the Suns would be at 13. And then you'd see whoever's at 12. I don't even know by then the next five games for the Suns. I mean, anybody can be at 12. I would bet probably Portland's going to be at 12. Then, and then 11, I'd probably say would be OKC. And then 10, I bet, by in five games, I bet the Lakers are in there at 10. And then at 9, I'd say probably the Timberwolves. And then at 8, I'd probably say the Jazz, um, if I had to be 
No, I'd say actually then that nine would be the Jazz and then eight would be the Timberwolves. Just you know, looking off of some some of the team schedules, I think the Lakers have an easy couple games coming up. I think the Lakers soon in the next couple games will be able to jump up to that ten seed. Right now, they're sitting there at the thirteen. A win can get to the twelve tomorrow. Um, but I do think the Lakers will jump up to the 10, especially with Anthony Davis returning. But should the Suns trade DeAndre Aiden? I think it's a big question. It just depends what's, what you're getting in return, I think. If I'm the Phoenix Suns, I'm still going to be fighting even if I get rid of DeAndre Aiden because you still have Devin Booker, you still have Chris Paul. So in that case, um, I'm going to be wanting a center in return. I mean, not a, you know, not like, not like a, a like a really good center, but someone who has potential. Um, and looking at one of these players and actually a team that is interested in DeAndre Aiden could be a good trade for this um for this Suns team. And DeAndre Aiden would be going over to the Toronto Raptors to team up with um Toronto. And the Suns would receive uh, center Precious Achua, who showed some good strides this season. I think he could be a good center for the Phoenix Suns with Chris Paul by his side and Devin Booker. I think he, he could improve with those guys all along him. Also would receive stretch four uh, Chris Boucher. He could place off the bench and do some really good things. And also you'd receive expiring contract Gary Trent Jr., um, how do you make that work with Devin Booker um, being a shooting guard and um, and and then Devin Booker being a shooting guard and then um, Devin Booker being the shooting guard and Chris Paul being the point guard? I I would think that Gary Tr- Jr. would. And I know he he was he's not he's not been doing this in Toronto, but I think Gary Trent Jr. would come off the bench as a six man um, with campaign. I think those two would be deadly together off the bench be really good nice uh, backcourt off the bench and um along with those guys you have Chris Boucher um this trade is just for the Suns I think they have a chance in the west in the west for sure but they would need to change things now um um, so, yeah, I mean, here's the outlook of it. The Suns, if this trade happens, you got Chris Paul at the point guard. You got Devin Booker at the shooting guard. You got Bridges at the small forward. You got Cam Johnson at the four. Um, you got, you know, um, then you got Jay Crowder. I mean, not Jay Crowder. You got Johnson at the four, and you got Precious at you at the five. Um, then from there on, you have off the bench, you have Chris Boucher, you have Gary Trent Jr., and you have Gary Trent Jr., you have Chris Boucher and Campaign. And then with those three guys, also not to forget, um, which I think in this case, I think the Suns would maybe release him or buy him out, but um, I think whatever you get for Jay Crowder. But I think in this case, if this trade were to happen, I think Jay Crowder would be bought out by the Suns, and the Heat would pick him up and sign him to their roster. Um, that's just what I'm thinking based off of. Um, but yeah, I think the Suns would become a dangerous, more dangerous team. But once you do that trade and once Booker and Johnson return, it's just about for me, how do you bounce back after being so behind? After, you know, if, if let's say you do struggle in these next five games and you lose like four out of the five, it's going to be hard to get back um, because then you're going to be like three and a half, maybe maybe let's say three and a half, three games back from the 10, from the 10 seed. Um, and I know that's not that hard, right? But it could take a couple weeks and then a, a loss or two sets you back. So this team has to play perfect basketball from there on out. And if we're going to be totally honest, um, this team, the Suns team, they don't want to finish as a playing team. That's not something you want to do. Um, because here's why. I mean, yes, in reality, all you have to get back to is the 10th seed. But in the West, I mean, I don't think they could get back to the six, but they need to be at like, you know, higher. And you need to, if I was the Sun, if I'm the Suns, I'm trying to get to that nine seed at most. Um, because if, if I'm, you know, if I'm the Phoenix Suns, I want to face the one. No, I don't know. It just depends who the one seed is. I don't know. It's really hard. Um, but I, what I do know is if I'm the Suns, I'd rather be the nine seed um, because I think at this point you know that you're not going to be able to get to the seven seed, right? 
So from that that point on, I would I'd be the, I'd want to be the nine seed instead of the eight seed because um, with the eight seed you have a harder matchup at the seven, de- just depending who's there though. Um, and with the nine seed, when you face the ten seed, you have um, you have a home game. But at the same time, with the eight seven game, if you win, if you win. Um, you're automatically in. So I guess I would rather be the eight seed after all that. Um, but, um, you know, it's really hard to think about, but it depends who's there at seven. Um, if it's the Timberwolves, you know, screw it. Let's, well, it's, if it's a healthy Timberwolves, um, that's, that's a problem. But, um, you know, I think that it just depends what this Suns team's going to do. Um, you know, I was thinking about it, and and I don't think this is this team does not need a rebuild. But what this team might need is a reload. Um, you know, they may need to get some players out, get some things out, and get some things in, and just refresh. Um, going into next season, I don't know if CP three is in in the in the conversation with them next season. I don't know what's the, what's going on with that because I think I think that maybe. This Suns team, I think the Suns team has taken a right direction um, before Chris Paul came here. I'm not saying he's been the problem because um, in Chris Paul's first season and even last year, he was a really good piece for the Suns team, made them a great team. Uh, but Chris Paul hasn't been that great this year. I know he's averaging 13 points, but he's not been that great. He's not been the Chris Paul that we've been used to seeing. And um, I don't know if Chris Paul is a part of the plans for the Phoenix Suns in the near future. Um I don't know if that if he's going to retire. I don't know. But what I can tell you is it just all depends how the Phoenix Suns are going to get healthy. Um, I don't know if they're going to trade Aiden or not. I don't know what's going to happen with this Phoenix Suns team. But we'll we'll see it all come down and, at, with this trade deadline coming up. You guys let me know what you guys think about this idea. And that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed and peace out.